So on Tuesday, the 31st of August at 12 noon, there's going to be another big meeting between the SEC, Ripple, and Judge Netburn. I'm going to talk about what some of the expectations are for this upcoming meeting and if it's actually better for Ripple or the SEC. Also, Bitcoin has been experiencing a pullback in price. Some technical analysts are calling this a pullback or consolidation or a retrace if you're following the Fibonacci levels and watch some of the technical analysis. But there's a couple of things coming up that are really big for the price of Bitcoin. I'm going to talk about what those two things are and what that typically means for the price and thus the rest of the crypto market. Also, XRP has been relisted on two exchanges. So I'm going to talk about those two exchanges and if it could actually spur on other exchanges to list XRP or if they're going to continue to delist it. Hey everyone, my name is Randy and welcome back to the Late Night Grind. Right here on this channel, we're covering the Ripple versus the SEC case, as well as other cryptocurrency news, investment markets, and personal finance. So if you want to follow along with any of those topics, make sure you hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notification icon, and as always, I believe the people in the crypto space are some of the most generous people on the planet. So if you are feeling generous, go ahead, hit the thumbs up button. It really helps out with the YouTube algorithm. Along with watching this video all the way through, those are the two best things you can do to support a YouTube channel. So if you do that, I greatly appreciate it. All right, so let's jump into it. First thing we're going to talk about is the price of Bitcoin, and which of course drives the rest of the crypto market. Right now, the price of Bitcoin is at about 47,000 after hitting nearly 51,000 several days ago. Many people thought it was going to be onward and upward. In fact, some of the technical analysts that I saw, uh, even some of them were saying that it looks like this is the beginning of the remainder of this year's bull run. Well, now some of them are actually starting to turn bearish, meaning they think the price of Bitcoin is going to continue to consolidate. Now, some of them said it's likely going to be very short term, in fact, probably just for this week, but at least for the past day or two, they've been right. And of course, a lot of them say when you have such a big run up like Bitcoin has had for the past three weeks, you always need some pullbacks and some consolidation uh, in order for healthy growth. You can't just continue to go parabolic. Now, one of the good things that is coming up for the price of Bitcoin is what's known as a golden cross. Now, in, in if you look at technical analysis, you might hear some people sometimes talk about the death cross and the golden cross. Well, the, the death cross is basically is when the 50 day average dips below the 200 day average, usually signals that the price of that stock, or in this case, Bitcoin has been going down. The golden cross, however, is, be, is the exact opposite. It's when the 50 day moving average starts to go up and above the 200 day moving average, typically signals that the price of that stock, or in this case, Bitcoin, is, is going up. Now, a lot of people say that these are actually just lag indicators. They don't indicate future results, but it basically says what Bitcoin has been doing uh, for the past couple of months, and this is the result. Now, I was watching one of the technical analysts that I watch on a daily basis, and he was going over this uh, factor of the death cross versus the golden cross strictly regarding Bitcoin. And from what he had been researching, the death crosses in the stock market typically signal uh, further downturns for that particular stock. But in Bitcoin, it didn't really mean that. In fact, the last time that Bitcoin ha had that death cross, it didn't really move anywhere. It was already at somewhat of a low point in that consolidation point. In that consolidation point. Now, what's shaping up in probably the next two weeks, um, could be sooner, could be a little bit later, depending on the, what the price of Bitcoin does, but that golden cross is now shaping up, meaning that 50-day moving average is really starting to creep up, and that 200-day moving average is kind of being is kind of staying steady because it has a much longer time frame that it has to pull the average from. So this golden cross, uh, this technical analyst was showing that every time that Bitcoin had hit that golden cross, it signaled a much much bigger uh, momentum swing and bullish time in the market than the death cross did when it was headed downward. So if you're looking for that to be a price mover of Bitcoin, well, it's certainly not going to hurt it. So like I said, that's going to be a couple of weeks out. So I'm going to continue to watch the technical analysis to see what happens with that. The other thing that is shaping up here at the end of the month is that options are now expiring on Bitcoin futures contracts. Now, without getting into a lot of detail, basically what that means is that traders are essentially placing their bets and selling those bets to people who think that the price of Bitcoin may be above or below a certain point. Well, right now, the max pain point of that is 44,000, meaning some of the lowest prices that people think Bitcoin is going to is going to actually sell at, at by the end of the month is 44,000. Now, that's significantly lower than it is right now, but at the same time, it's not a catastrophic 28,000. It doesn't show that traders that are betting uh, on Bitcoin to go lower aren't 
placing their bets at 30,000 or 28,000 or 20,000. 44,000 seems to be that number. Okay, now I'm gonna talk about XRP and it's getting relisted. There's been a huge push by the XRP army to get XRP relisted, uh, which of course XRP was delisted by many exchanges, especially the ones in the United States, because of the ongoing lawsuit with the SEC versus Ripple. In fact, last week there was a new one in Canada that just delisted XRP because of that lawsuit. Now here's the thing, there are two exchanges that went ahead and relisted XRP. One of them is Femex. Now this was actually, this isn't new news. They actually did this a couple of months ago, uh, but it's taken its good old time getting that news out. So that's actually been done for a while. But the other day I saw there was rumors that Nexo, which is another cryptocurrency exchange, had added XRP to its exchange. Someone had tweeted it out and it went viral within the XRP and cryptocurrency community. But here's the thing. Upon looking into it, when some people were saying, I don't know if they did, because it looks like the person that sent out that tweet basically took a screenshot, which could be photoshopped, that shows the Nexo account making this announcement that they were relisting XRP. Well, if you go to the Nexo account on Twitter, you can't find that tweet anywhere. It's nowhere to be found. And several people have pointed this out. So, so what's to do? Well, you'd actually have to go create an account on Nexo and actually look if you can see, if you can buy XRP on Nexo. So if you have an account on Nexo, let me know in the comment section below if you can see anything about XRP on their website or if it's even available to purchase or trade. Because as of right now, I think the jury is still out on whether Nexo actually added XRP to their exchange. And speaking of the Ripple versus the SEC case, next Tuesday, the end of the month, August 31st, they are having a big phone call with it, with the SEC, with Ripple, and with Judge Netburn. Now what this is for is they're gonna discuss the privilege disputes. Okay, so what's this about? Well, at one point, Ripple had told the SEC that they believe the SEC has internal communications and interagency communications that they believe the interagency communications will show what the SEC and all the other financial, regula financial regulatory agencies had discussed and how they came up with their ideas that Bitcoin, Ethereum are not securities and how XRP could be. Well, Judge Netburn sided with Ripple, not once, but so far twice, to tell the SEC that they need to turn over these documents, all these interagency communications, emails, all of the comments that are on paper about what they thought about these cryptocurrencies and turn them over to Ripple. So what the SEC did was they got all these documents together and they said, well, listen, we can turn over these documents, but it's gonna come with a privilege log. Meaning if something is too important for the public eye or for anybody else to see, we're gonna, re we're gonna label it as privileged. So they did that. They submitted a privilege log with 56 articles labeled privileged. Hmm. It's basically a fan, it's basically a way for them to get around not showing anybody those documents. What so what happens on Tuesday? Well, my guess is that for the third time, Judge Nepburn is going to say, "Listen, you need to turn over all these documents." You've now gone to this well several times claiming privilege, but this is an extremely important case. This is a high profile case. I'm guessing Judge Nepburn is going to side with Ripple and who knows what's gonna happen. I don't know how exactly these court cases work. I'm not a legal expert. I don't know how, I don't know if the SEC can actually be held in contempt of court by withholding these documents and saying they're privileged and not letting Ripple see them. Who knows? So we're gonna get to see. As with all these other telephone conferences, there's typically, uh, the judge typically allows uh, a bunch of users to log on and listen. The last couple conferences, there has been as many as, many as 4,000 seats allowed to dial in and listen. Uh, I haven't gotten to do any of that yet, but I've been following a few people that uh, did dial in and were live tweeting it. Uh, of course, you can't live stream it or broadcast it or anything like that. You will get in major trouble, so don't try it. Um, but as soon as I see that information, I will be posting it in the description below. I'll also be uh, tweeting it out. So if you're not following me on Twitter and you're on Twitter, go ahead and uh, click on my account. You can go and follow me there and watch out for that information. And if you've been following the price of XRP lately, you've seen that it's been dipping partly because of Bitcoin consolidating and pulling back right now. But if this phone call on Tuesday takes place and it very much goes and the judge very much sides with Ripple, you're more than likely to see at least a good bump in the price of XRP. So some of the technical analysis that I've been saying are still saying there's a chance that XRP could go to a dollar even as low as 83 cents. And then they look at the possible resistance levels on the way up as Bitcoin continues its bull run. And some of those prices are very interesting. Right now I'm looking at $1.64 and $2 as those next resistance levels for XRP to hit. 
Uh, some of them after that kind of start getting crazy when they start hitting, when they start saying, look out for $7.50, $16.25 by the end of the year. But if you want to stick around and follow all these stories, make sure you're subscribed. And if you're new to the channel, go ahead, hit the community tab. I put up polls up there and I always love to see what you guys think. And as always, let me know in the comment section below what you guys think of this whole SEC versus Ripple case. I really appreciate you watching it all the way to the end and giving it that big thumbs up. And as always, I'll see you guys on the next video.